Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video, how to import RTF files, I'm going to show you how to import an RTF file into Eclipse. In our previous video, I showed you how to export RTF files by going to File and Export, and the instructions to import files are similar. The first step to importing an RTF file is again to open a file. In this case, you're going to open a file that you'd like to import the data into. So if you have an RTF of a transcript, you'll open up an Eclipse file to import it into. And I'm going to go ahead and do that first. And to create a blank Eclipse file to import an RTF file into, I'm going to go to Transcript. And where it says Name, I'm going to type in a new name I have not already used. I'm going to call this file Import and press OK. Eclipse will confirm that I wish to create the file, and I'll hit Yes. And once I'm in the blank Eclipse file, I can start importing data. I'm going to go to File, and then Import. And you see that in the bottom right, the default file type it's looking for is Eclipse V8 files. I can click this drop-down list and change it to RTF instead. And you see that the previous RTF files that I made, one of my main dictionary, one of the sample file ECL, and one of the sample file note file, and I can import these files. In this case, since I'm in a transcript, I'm going to import the RTF of the ECL file. I'll select the sample file ECL.RTF and press OK. And I now have the whole file in a new document. So if I go to the top, you see that I have the same content in this document as I had in the original file that I exported to an RTF. If desired, you can also import information onto the end of an existing file. If I open up a different file, I'm going to open up my conflicts file. I'll go to the end and I'll go to file and import again. I'll change the file type selector to RTF. And again, since I'm in a transcript file, I'm going to select the ECL version of the RTF and I'll press OK. And that information has been appended directly to the end of my existing file. And you see that it has all of the steno information. RTF imports and exports make collaboration between reporters on different CAT systems simple and straightforward. I can close this file and I can do the same thing with a note file. If I create a blank note file called import and press OK, I can go to file and import. And if I change the file type selector to RTF, you see that I have my sample file note version RTF and I can select it and press OK. And all of the strokes for my job have been entered into the note file and I can translate this file and begin working on it. RTF imports of notes are less common than of ECL files or dictionaries. However, RTF note imports can be helpful if you need to translate work from another reporter who used another CAT system, such as a colleague who retired or moved. Note files work the same way as ECL files. Next, I'm going to create a blank dictionary and import the RTF of my dictionary that I made. I'll click on Dictionary. And I'm going to go ahead and call this dictionary import as well. I'll again confirm that I wish to create this dictionary. And now that I'm in a blank dictionary, I can repeat the same steps. I'll go to File and Import. And in the bottom right, again, I need to change the file type selector to RTF. And I have my RTF of my dictionary that I made and I can press OK. After pressing OK, Eclipse will ask me if I wish to trim redundant dictionary entries. Only dictionary imports will ask you to do this. What this does is remove unnecessary dictionary entries that you don't need to have. For instance, if I have the word have in my dictionary and I have the word not in my dictionary, I don't need to have those two same steno strokes globaled together as the word have not. If you choose yes to this message, Eclipse will trim entries like that. You will not lose any entries that result in actual unique translation. However, this will pare down the size of your dictionary, and that can be helpful for dictionary management. I'm going to go ahead and press yes in this instance, and we'll see how many entries it's able to trim. RTF dictionary imports will also ask you if the file came from a Windows program or a DOS program, 
and the answer modernly is almost always Windows. In this case, I made the RTF on the same computer, so I know it came from a Windows system. And if you were to choose the wrong option here, the import just simply probably wouldn't work well, and you could choose the other option to correct it. Eclipse has finished importing the dictionary, and you see that I have a hefty dictionary left. I still have 57,727 entries. Let's compare that to the original dictionary that I exported from. And so here I have 59,129 entries, and so it was able to trim a little over 1,000 entries. And those again are entries that weren't going to help me translate any better, they were just taking up space in my dictionary. Dictionaries work the same way as the other files, where if you have a document that already has data in it, you can still import information from RTF simply by going to File and Import and choosing the right file type. Any additional entries will be merged in, and depending on your settings under Alt-U, Edit tab, if you have Detect Conflicts checked, Eclipse will ask you which version of an entry you would like to keep if it sees the same steno defined as different entries in both dictionaries that you're merging together. If you do not have Detect Conflicts checked, Eclipse will simply import the definition from the dictionary that you're importing. So if you want to pick and choose any conflicted steno definitions in dictionaries that you're merging together, you want to have Detect Conflicts checked. But if you just wish to update your dictionary with whatever definitions you're importing, you can leave Detect Conflicts unchecked, and Eclipse will give preference to the dictionary entries that you're importing. This is true anytime you're merging dictionaries together, no matter what format you're doing it in. Detect Conflicts is an important feature to keep in mind when you do merge dictionaries together. It doesn't come into play when you're merging any other type of file. I'm going to close out of these dictionaries. And if I go to my settings, programming, and file locations, much like how there is an export equals setting, there's also an import equals setting that I can add. If I press add, I can go down to import. When I press OK, I'm given the option to choose a location on my computer from which I can import files. Now in the last video, I made a folder for exports. I'll choose desktop and press make new folder. And I'm going to call this folder Eclipse Imports. And this is where I'll save all of the information that I receive from non-Eclipse users that I need to import into Eclipse. I'll press enter to save that name, and then I'll select the Eclipse Imports folder and press OK. So now I have Import Equals, and it is pointing at my desktop to the Eclipse Imports folder. I'll press OK and OK. After setting up my file location, the Programming tab for Import, I can open up a file. I'll go ahead and open up a blank transcript again. I'll hit Yes to create the blank file. I'm going to go to File and Import. And in the bottom right, where it says Eclipse V8, I can change that to RTF. And off camera, I copied a couple of files into my imports folder so that I could use them. And I have a dictionary file with the date. However, I also have a sample file, ECL RTF, which I'm going to go ahead and import. And so once that's done, I have the whole file and I can begin working on it. If you frequently import or export, having your file location set up can be a huge time saver and help make staying organized a lot easier. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about Eclipse or any of our other great products, as a reminder, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24 seven, and tech support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays at 772-288-3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thanks so much for watching our videos. If you enjoy them, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. With notifications turned on, you'll be notified of our new content as soon as we publish it. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.